What's up guys? Welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage. In this episode, we are going to take my Lamborghini header, we're going to chop it up. Stay tuned. Like I said, this header is off of a Lamborghini Gallardo. I did a video of what we're doing with this header. It's actually going into a Porsche 944 with a five cylinder Volkswagen engine. Um, I'll post that down below and at the end of the video. But in order to do what I want to do with it, I need to chop off the ball and socket flange on this end, weld on a V-band, and then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna heat wrap this whole thing as well. The reason I want to cut this ball and socket flange off is because I'm gonna be using a V-band instead. However, I'm gonna be running full three inch exhaust. And this three inch V-band, well, just slides over the whole thing because this is two and a half. So I got a reducer from Vibrant Performance. This is just a two and a half inch to three inch concentric reducer made of stainless as well. The header stainless, the V-band stainless, everything I'm doing is out of stainless. But if you look, the three inch portion fits beautifully. That's gonna work out great. However, the header's not two and a half. It's actually larger than that. So I'm gonna have to start by chopping this off, getting rid of the ball and socket portion of this and coming back to a nice level and flat portion of this header. And then measure that, I'm gonna have to measure the reducer and cut the reducer as well. So let's start by chopping this end off the header. In order to try to make as straight as cut as possible, and I haven't done this before, uh, so we're gonna try it together, but I'm gonna throw a zip tie on here and then I'm gonna mark my cut line off of the zip tie. I've seen people use O-rings, I've seen people do a number of things, but I figured this has gotta be better than me just using my naked eye. Once you cut the zip tie off, looks like that, which looks pretty straight to me. After a quick trip to the belt sander, it is nice and true and straight, but now, we have to fit this reducer. And like I said, it's not exactly the right size. So it needs to be cut down. Luckily, my buddy Alan, who is an engineer, is here and he helped me figure out a way to do all this. So we took our dial calipers and measured the inside of this, which is 66 and a half millimeters. We then took one of my telescoping bore gauges and we set it to exactly 66.5 millimeters. Now bear with me, I'm almost done explaining this. If it's going over your head, don't worry, we're gonna get back to cutting and grinding and welding and shit here in just a second. After we have this telescoping bore gauge set to the exact width that we want, we go in and find the exact spot inside this reducer. Once again, use our calipers to find the depth, you lock that down, and then you can follow from the outside and you can actually scribe a line in the outside of this reducer, which I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's a line scribed in there. I'm actually gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna make it nice and bright so I know where to cut. And I'm gonna cut it a hair long, that way I can go back to the belt sander and finish it nice and smooth exactly the way I want to and come up slowly on that measurement so that we have a perfect fit on the header. We have the reducer, again, nice and trued up. I deburred all the edges on it. And here's how it fits on the header, which for an amateur, looking pretty good. I am going to attempt to MIG weld this. The original header was all MIG welded and it's been about 10 or 12 years since I've TIG welded stainless. So uh, to say I'm a little rusty would be quite the understatement. But I've also never MIG welded stainless before. So we're just gonna see what happens. Send it. All right, we got one tack. Oh, can you see that? We got three tacks on it. So far, so good. I'm gonna throw a quick bead on here, make sure everything looks good and continue on. 
And once this is welded on, then we're going to come back and do the V-band flange. Holy shit, it looks like I know what I'm doing! For the most part, the welds turned out pretty good. I, I mean, I think that they're definitely sound welds, but there was an area. I started holding the gun a little bit differently, so the way I found that it worked best was coming in at kind of a 45 degree angle and then dragging it down. If I came in at a straight angle and I went up or down, it didn't seem to penetrate as well. What I probably should have done is taken the two pieces that I cut off, the piece of the header and the piece of this adapter, and I should have practiced welding that before I did this, but I didn't think about it. So this is the result. Why didn't I think of that? That was dumb. Now that we've made it this far, I'm gonna go ahead and weld the V-band flange on. This time there was once again a learning curve. That is what we started out with. And that is just pulling the gun in a straight line. And that's based off a video I watched on YouTube uh, about MIG welding stainless steel. However, towards the end, I started using a small circular motion like I'm used to doing on just standard carbon steel. And I feel like I got better overall welds by doing that. That's an example there, and that's another example there. All in all, considering that some of the factory welds look like that, and that's on a Lamborghini, I'm not displeased at all. We're gonna let this thing cool down, which is gonna take a few minutes, which means I get to drink a beer or two, and then I'm gonna come back, and uh, I'm gonna heat wrap this whole thing, and make it real pretty. No one will ever see these little guys. Last but not least, Al and I, are gonna take this 50 feet of DEI titanium heat wrap. Uh, this is two inch wide and like I said, 50 feet long. And we're gonna wrap this thing. There's no real rhyme or reason to how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna probably start each primary tube, go through as we progress, then you can kind of just start with one big wrap all the way around until we finish at the V-band. I'm no expert, but we're gonna give it the old college try, so. Cue the time lapse. There is the finished product. I'll be damned if that's not the prettiest Lamborghini header for a Volkswagen engine and a Porsche 944 that I've ever seen. In all seriousness, I think it turned out really, really nice. I love the titanium exhaust wrap. It looks really good on this big ram horn five cylinder manifold. We were able to do it by starting on primaries here and not having to use ties, terminating in certain spots and then restarting back on a primary to where the only stainless ties we have on the entire thing is right here and that's where it finally terminates at the V-band. Not sure how well the lighting is, but if you see in there, we got good penetration on the welds. Pretty sweet. That's that, guys. Another episode in the books. Really happy with the way that turned out. If you have not signed up for the 5,000 subscriber giveaway, make sure you do that. It's the first link below. Uh, it ends on July 4th. We're like right on the cusp, uh, trending to where we're going to hit 5,000. Maybe we'll be 25 short. So tell your friends, have people sign up, and let's make 5,000 happen. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.